Hi, this video is going to take a look at pivot tables. Now the first part of making a pivot table is to ensure that your data is correctly structured. Um, you'll hear me talk about this as what I call good data. Here we have a set of data and this is sales figures for uh, cars and we can scroll down the data and you'll see there is a fair amount of data here covering a couple of years worth of car sales. Now what defines this as good data is the headers are touching the data itself. The data is continuous and it doesn't have any empty rows or empty columns within it. So now that is no longer good data. A quick way of testing if your data is good data is to click somewhere within it and do the keyboard shortcut Control A. If all of the data is selected, then it, you can assume that this is uh, on the start to be in good data. This has stopped here where the empty column is and it has stopped when it reached the empty row. Therefore, this is not good data. If I remove those empty columns and rows, now when I click within the data and do Control A, all of what I expected to be selected has now been selected. A couple of other things that define good data. As I say, the headers should be touching the data and there should be nothing else touching the data. So there shouldn't be any uh, notes or comments touching the data, otherwise the computer will assume that they are part of the data and I just did control A again there and you notice how that column is now selected because Excel assumes it is part of the data. We only want the data itself to be selected when we do the control A. The other thing about the headers is you'll notice that they are in bold. Um, this is just a standard it helps Excel understand that they are headers because they're different. In this instance, Excel would recognize it anyway, because here we have, for example, we have text as the header and below it we have numbers. Here we have text as the header and below it we have dates. Here we have text as the header and below it numbers. So there is enough information there to differentiate between the headers and the data. So Excel would pick up on the fact that they are headers, but it's just as well to put them in bold. Quick way of putting them in bold, click on the very first one, Control shift right arrow, and then Control b to put it into bold or toggle the bold on and off. Okay, so Control shift right, Control b to make it bold. Okay, so we've now determined that this is good data. Now that we've determined that we actually have good data to start with, we can look at how we can summarize this data. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of ways of summarizing by using filters. So if I simply click on this button here, it filters. And I could say, let's have a look. And because this is a date field, I have some date filters. And because I'm using 2016, it's actually grouped them together into different uh, date types. So within there I've got the individual days, within there I've got the months, and here I've got the year. So let's just turn off that and let's have a look at just January in 2018 to see the sales. All of these sales are now the January 18. Let's also see just the sales that Fred made. There we have the sales that Fred made in January 18. And so now we can actually look at see some information about these and we'll see for example that actually a lot of his sales were to under 25 customers um, again um, there's a quite a wide range of methods of payment between those uh, types of customer and if we were to look here we could see that there's a wide range also of models of car he sold but this is very crude um, if I just take off those filters. There are other ways of doing this. The best way is to start with having this as a table. Now there's a variety of different ways to turn data into a table. Once we've established that it's good data, the simplest way is simply to do Control T. You'll notice that Excel has automatically picked up the range of data 
and it's also automatically picked up the fact that the table has headers because we made them bold and also because there is significant difference between the headers and the data below. So what I then do is press enter and this has now turned my data into a table. You'll notice that the table itself now has headers with filters on them um, but the key thing is I can also now put in something called a slicer. So let's put in a slicer for date, uh, in fact not date but for salesperson and make and click OK. And you'll notice that here we have those slices and I can now say let's see Fred how many Mitsubishi's did Fred sell and when did he sell them. So there we have it that's quite a simple way of doing filters. Now all these filters are is simple filters just the same as applying the filter on here. There's no difference at all. Um, likewise if I go to my data ribbon and say clear then it clears all the filters. The great thing about slices is we can click on one item there to select it or we can hold down shift and click on multiple items or we can select one and hold down control and select non-adjacent items. We could also choose that one there to click to choose multiples. If we want to get rid of a slicer we simply select it and press the delete key. Select it and press the delete key. What you will notice however is that this has not cleared any filters that have been applied using the slicer. You do then have to click clear to get rid of them. Um, you do have the option there to turn on and off the filter buttons. Um, good idea to leave them on anyway. So there, in a quick snapshot, is how to turn your data into a table. We're now going to have a look at how we can use this table as a starting point and then turn our data into a pivot table, or more accurately, to summarize our data using a pivot table, because the data itself is not going to be changed. Unlike putting filters on, which actually change how the data is displayed, we're going to create a pivot table which is based upon the data but doesn't actually change the view of the data at all. So our pivot table will actually go on a new sheet by itself. Um, it doesn't have to, we can have our pivot table on the same sheet or on a different sheet which we define with other things as well. But in this instance, we're gonna put it on a table, on a, on a sheet by itself. Um, in order to do this, I need to make sure I'm clicked within the data. And the reason that's important is if I click outside of the data, the table tools ribbon has disappeared. When I click back inside the data, my table tools ribbon has appeared. That's the one we want. And we're going to say summarize with pivot table. Now what this is going to do is it will summarize the data within my table, however big that is, because it, the pivot table is referring to this table as table one or whatever name we've given it. And I would recommend you always rename your tables. So summarize the pivot table is summarizing this table with the pivot table. And I'll show you what happens if we don't do this. So summarize the pivot table, which is the range where it is table one or like I say, whatever we have called our table. Where do I want this to go? Well, I said we're going to put it on a new worksheet and I click OK. It opens up a new worksheet. I'm going to straight away rename this one, call it PT for pivot table. And as long as I'm clicked within this area here, which is my pivot table, I will have the pivot table fields and the pivot table ribbons. If I click away from that, the pivot table ribbons and fields disappear. So I need to click back within the area to be able to work on the pivot table. So now let's have a look at what we did before. Let's have a look at the salesperson, put him down in the rows. And let's also have a look at the make. And if I put that there, we can now put down the price down here in values. And now what we're seeing is two-dimensional data or cross-tabulated data. So I'm seeing bill here but I'm also seeing BMW and the data that I'm seeing is 
the price of all those BMWs that Bill sold added together. Now, if I didn't want to see the amount of money, I just wanted to see how many he sold, I can change this here. Now, there's a variety of different ways I can change it. I'm going to go to the value field settings here, and I'll change sum to count, which will tell me how many sales he made. Okay, so that's just a brief summary of how we can turn our data into a pivot table or summarize using a pivot table. We're now going to have a look at how we can create a pivot chart based upon this pivot table data. Um, for some people, viewing data in this format is not very clear, not very obvious as to what's going on. So what we're going to do instead is I'll click again within the pivot table so I can get my pivot table tools ribbons. And you'll notice that I have two ribbons here. I have analyze and design. Design is to do with how this looks. Analyze is how I can change this to see different types of data. So I'm going to click on here to say pivot chart. Excel will ask me what type of chart I want to display. And I can choose a 3D column chart and click OK. Now what you'll notice straight away is this is actually very difficult to read, this particular type of chart. And so in order to fix that, I can switch these around. I can say let's have them make and the salesperson the other way around. And now straight away that chart is much easier to read. Um, just to make this um, even clearer, what I could do is say that actually I would like uh, the one that sold the most to be furthest on the left. So if I come here and I right click and I say sort and sort largest to smallest, now the largest is on the left, the largest total sales running across to the smallest. And it may be that this is too big to see on the same sheet or confusing seeing it next to the data there. So I can put this on its own sheet. And again, with this chart, I now have three different ribbons. Yeah. And the format again is to do with how it looks, design also how it looks, but also I can move the chart onto a new sheet. Click OK. And now that chart is on its own sheet with nothing else on the sheet. And that's a brief outline on how to create a pivot chart from an existing pivot table which has been created from existing data. Now that we have our data as a pivot chart, what we could do is have a look at how we can use this, because at the moment it's on its own sheet, and it makes much more sense to have it on a separate sheet um, or a dashboard. So let's call this one uh, report. And what we'll do now is we'll just come over here and select the chart, and then from the design ribbon we'll move the chart and we'll make it an object in our report sheet. This lets us put multiple pivot charts or pivot tables within the same sheet and we can align these, arrange them and add slices to them to allow other people to analyze the data. Um, I've simply resized this one and I'm now going to add a couple of slices to allow someone else to actually edit this sheet. So I've still got that chart selected. I'm going to say insert slicer. I'll insert slices for the salesperson and make and then just simply reposition these slices to the side. Um, I'm holding down alt as I drag them and this allows them to snap into the corners of cells. So as I'm dragging I hold down the alt key and I'll resize that a bit smaller. And what I can also do is, as I resize this one, I can tell it that I want that to be multiple columns. 
So let's say we have three columns there for the make. And this now lets us analyze our pivot chart very quickly. So let's see the sales for Bill. And there's the sales for Bill for all the makes. Let's clear that. So we're looking at all three salespeople again. And let's see the sales for BMW. So there's the BMW sales by those three people. Um, again, holding down the control key, I can choose multiple options here for model or multiple options for salespeople. At any time, I can click either or both of those to clear. Now that we have our data in our report sheet, what we can do is look at how we can copy and paste this to export it into another application such as Word. Um, I want to select this data. I can either select like that to select around the outside of the data, or I can click in one of the cells and then use the arrows to move myself. So you'll notice that I've actually selected the cell immediately underneath the corner of the data there. And I'll now move to the opposite corner of where I want selected and hold down shift and do a select. Now, before I do a copy, what I also want to do is I want to hide to these grid lines here. So this is under the view ribbon and I simply untick the grid lines to hide the view of the grid lines. Now that has only affected the sheet that I'm on. So this is my report sheet and on my report sheet, I don't want the grid lines to be visible. Now I've still got that same selection. I'm now going to use keyboard shortcut for copy. So control C for copy. And I'm now going to go into Word, but I'm not going to just do a straightforward paste. I'm going to do a paste special. And the special thing I'm going to paste is a link to the Excel worksheet object. And click OK. Now the reason I've done it that way is in the Word document, I will then be able to actually double click in this area here to open up the Excel. The beauty of this in the Word document is it's completely editable and scalable. So I can play around my settings there just to make sure it actually fits on the page. I'll make it slightly smaller. There we go. And I could now go to save this as a PDF. So I could do F12 on this document and simply save it as a PDF. And that will lock all of those settings in place, including all the text and any fields that I've used in there. The beauty of having this as an inserted Excel object is I can double click within this object and it will take me to Excel and I can now use the commands in Excel to edit what I'm going to see on the screen. So I've chosen just Bill and when I come out of Excel and go back to my Word document you'll notice that it is updated there as well. At any time if I want to get back into the Excel document I just double click there and once it's updated, I can then go back to Word to see the changes. Now, the beauty of this is the Word document is actually referring to the saved Excel file if I don't have it open. So just to demonstrate that, if I now save the Excel file and close it down, this is still a linked Excel object. In other words, I can edit this, so the linked worksheet object, I can open the link and that again will open Excel, open the other object and let me edit it. I can also get there by simply double clicking on the object. So let's see how to build it with a few of these different settings here. So I'll just do shift and select a few. And now when I close this and save it, it's not going to be reflected immediately over here, or not always. Um, if it's not reflected over here, all I need to do is right click within the object and say update link. And that will then in turn open the Excel file, check the data, and then put that into my Word document. And again, of course, at any time when I'm happy with my report, I can just click uh, F12 to save as and choose a PDF to save the file.